titled How High Can a Bala Bayit Reach in Memory of Irving Boonim Zechat Tzadik Levracha? So I don't even know how many people have even heard of Irving Boonim. But to me, he shows the heights that a person could reach. We talk about Torah in America in the 20th century. Irving Boonim is the name. It's an incredible, incredible person. Came to the shores of the United States early 1900s. Minimal, minimal background in Torah. And to watch a person single-handedly build Torah in America in every sphere is, is just mind-boggling. And she go ahead and he should inspire us. So who was this man? So he came over from Europe as a young man, early 1900s. That's way, that not that many years ago, 1980. We all know that the early 1900s in America, people thought there is no hope for Orthodox Judaism whatsoever. There's no hope. The form already started in the 1700s with the famous Pittsburgh platform and the meetings in Cincinnati every few decades. They had a stronghold. Conservative Judaism, late 1800s, was already picking up steam. And yes, there were some Orthodox synagogues dating back centuries, but in terms of the popularity in America, the Reform and Conservatives was where it was at. And the question is, what could possibly happen in New York and the rest of America in the early 1900s? You can have some European gedolim that people looked at as foreign, out of touch with reality. They're going to build Torah in America? It's not going to happen. Maybe a Rav Soloveitchik, because he was learned, he was a college a PhD, and he was trained, so maybe he could speak to American Jews, but Rav Aaron Cutler, Rav Moshe Feinstein, Rav Kamenetsky, it, it, there's no future for that Torah in America. And if the only God of people may listen to be Rav Soloveitchik, it's not going to make it. So it's incredible. The 20th century in America is an amazing, amazing phenomenon. So Irving Boonham in the early 1900s, so he was trained, he was learned in RJJ, the famous Robert Jacob Joseph School, which already was the first indication that orthodoxy can make it in America. And good old time adherence to halacha can survive in America, not be looked at as some outdated archaic system, has shalom. So he learned there, and then he's realizing that, okay, I have a little bit of a background here, but there's no connection to Torah Mitzvot here. What are we going to do? So his first project was the Young Israel Movement, the Lower East Side, that was the hub of Jewish activity. And he says, you know what? We have to have meetings, we have to have get-togethers, shirim. Originally, the Shurim in the early 1900s were with some of the leaders of the conservative movement, and they were speaking to the people. And then Irving Boonham said, You're going to have some conservative people speaking. And then in those days, the differences were subtle with conservative rabbis and Orthodox rabbis. It wasn't that. Extremely, you didn't have the driving on Shabbat. That was Max Dumont. That was a few decades later. The Bechitza was an issue, and, and things were starting to crack, but it wasn't so late. And Reverend Guna said, We're going to have a rotation of Orthodox conservative rabbis speaking. The, the, the people won't know what's what. So he slowly moved it away and made a charter for the young Israel that anyone who speaks has to be Orthodox. And we had to have machits in the shuls, and he started building up the young Israel movement, which people don't realize. Did a lot of kirov back in the day, and then started getting involved in college campuses. We have the Wolfson Project, the Olam Me Project, that's so involved in college campuses. Already a century ago, Reverend Boonin started getting involved in young Israel, which led to that. 
They had a project to bring kosher food to the college campuses because it wasn't just having kosher or not. Once this college student would start eating treif, then it wasn't that far a step before he intermarried as well. So that was his Young Israel Movement project that he began, which flourished. And many, many, many thousands and thousands of Jews. So they didn't have the Young Israel Shuls, the Young Israel Project, the Young Israel Speeches. They would have been lost to Judaism. So great. So he produced some Balabatim who connected to a shul. That's amazing. It's heroic itself. What else did he do? So you have the Torah Masora movement in America. Torah Masora said, we need to go ahead. And we cannot let our kids go to public school. That cannot be their education. Because that means they have no Jewish education in the Talmud Torah program on Sunday for an hour. They learn it's better than nothing, but that's not going to keep them Jewish. And the Talmud Torah program that may learn in the afternoon after public school, their whole life is public school, cannot be. Wherever there's a Jewish community in America, we need to have a yeshiva. And many, many people and rabbis as well said, what are you talking about? That's not democratic. Our kids go to public schools. That's what we do, and we have to supplement Jewish learning. There were rabbis that held that way. However, Aaron Kotler fought valiantly for the Torah Masora movement, which meant sending kids to private schools, day schools, yeshivas, and that's where they get their education. Now it's like, of course, you can send to public school. There was nothing understood in those days, in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, not at all. And it was Irving Boonham once again who was the head of that project, together with Rav Aaron Cutler's itself. Rav Soloveitchik was involved in it. Dr. Kamenetsky, like the Joe Kamenetsky, so many people involved in the Torah of Misora project, the Gedolim. But it was a different mindset that kids in America don't go to public schools. No, the Jews go to Jewish schools. And had the idea of high level learning. Or JJ was one yeshiva. We need to have high level learning. And Irving Budim helped build up the premier Torah institution, certainly in the yeshivish world in America, Lakewood. He was buddies so close with Ravaran, so close with Ravaran. I call buddies, but it really was a Talmud of Ravarim. Ravarim loved him, and he looked up to Ravarim. And he helped build it, like, would Yeshiva up? So listen to what he did. He built up the Young Israel Movement for Balabatim to get involved and connect to Torah. Torah Masora Project to build Yeshivas all over America. Day schools. Ravarim and Cutler built up Lakewood to say that we could have high level learning in America as well. Of course, Baruch Hashem or any YU was building up as well. With Rav Moshe Salvajik and the Rav. Then during these days, millions of Jews were being destroyed in Europe. So that had to be taken care of as well. And he was very involved in that. And his approach was, you do anything to save every Jew in Europe. Illegal passports, forgery, doesn't matter what documents you have to forge. You get the Jews out. There are some of the Jewish agents in everything. This protocol, everything has to be done in the proper way. The legendary story, it's a true story, where there was a fam farmer family, and he was trying to do whatever stuff he needed to do to get them out of Europe to save their lives. The Jewish agency, the, at least one member, I don't want to condemn the whole Jewish agency, but one member said, we can't do that. He said, let me tell you something. I have a big rock in my office, in my drawer. Tomorrow morning, I will take that rock. I'll go to the Jewish agency in Manhattan. It's a prominent building. I'll take the rock and smash the front window of the Jewish agency. The person said, what's that going to do, Irving Brunham? He said, I'll tell you what it's going to do. The police are going to come. The New York Times is going to come. 
And answer, Irving, what, why do you do that? And I'll say, because you guys don't care about the Jewish lives in Europe. This war is they're going to drum you out of the country. And sure enough, by 12 o'clock the next day, the Farber family, that process was already moving ahead to get them out of Europe. So the whole Vat HaTzala movement, where so many Gedolim and Lehman were involved to save the Jews from Europe, send over food, packages, whatever it was for the survivors, that was Irving Boonin. So just understand what the man did of Balabayas, a learned Balabayas. We'll call him a learner-earner these days, but look what he did. One man. And it even mentioned his own scholarly work, Ethics from Sinai, his work in Pirkeavos in the 60s, 70s, 80s. That was the Bar Mitzvah present. I still have it till this day. His three-volume work on Pirkeavos, incredible. So to me, he should be an inspiration to all of us, laymen and rabbis alike. Saving the Jewish lives, he did everything that saved the Jewish lives in Europe. He to produce Balabat in that state connected to the Judaism and the Israel movement. The day school movement throughout America. The, R, the RJJ and Ravar Cutler and Lakewood to produce higher level learning as well. The Torah movement in Israel. The fledgling days in the 50s. He was totally involved in that. And Rav Soloveitchik also got involved, and in I was building up yeshivish Torah institutions in Israel. The Rav was not exactly yeshivish. He was involved in that. And Irving Brunner played a big role in the Rav being there. And of course, he was by Rav Cutler's side as he, as he built it up together with Dr. Joe Kamenetsky. To think that in the 20th century, every movement, Jewish movement, from saving Jews' physical lives to spiritual lives. In America, in Europe, and in Israel, this man was involved in everything. If people want to read up about him, there's a book called The Fire in His Soul that Amos Bunim, his son, wrote about him and put out in the 80s to understand what it means to be a ball of bias whose whole heart and soul and body is involved in Kla Yisrael, to me it's a must read. We didn't even mention him in his business ethics. He was in the garment industry. Get the Shashem that he made, his word what his word was his word, and every cent that he made was to support his family and then to support every Jewish cause that he could. He's a model to us. I strongly suggest reading about him in a fire in the soul, understanding who he was and taking his life as an inspiration to every one of us. And us meaning whether we're Balabatim, rabbis, doesn't make a difference. To show what a life of mysterious nefesh of Abba Yisrael, Abba Torah is all about. Shalom.